Hello, welcome back. Today I wanted to do a little bit of assembly language programming. If you look out onto the internet, there are a lot of tutorials out there, but most of them are at kind of the hello world level. And it's very difficult to find content that is more intermediate level where you know you want to learn some concepts that are part of higher level language programming and you want to learn how they exist in assembly language like how do local variables exist how do you do dynamic memory management so those are the kinds of things i want to explore and today will just be kind of an introduction back into uh, assembly language programming uh, i do have a series from several years ago and it and that content is uh, still pretty good where it talks about processors registers and so forth and that's still uh, great content. Uh, for today, we're going to start by writing a program that uh, is able to read input from the user uh, from standard in and writes to standard output. Uh, we're going to be uh, everything, all the programming that we're going to do is going to be in Linux uh, with x64 architecture, also known as AMD64. And we're still going to be using the Phasm Assembler, uh, which can be found here at phasmassembler.net, which is the flat assembler. It's a great uh, little uh, product that's free and open source. And you can download it um, for all kinds of different operating systems here. But uh, for this tutorial, uh, we're going to be using uh, Linux. And uh, if, you're, if you've got Windows, you probably will want to use WSL or have a virtual machine. Same thing with Mac OS, you'll probably want to have a virtual machine running Linux. Uh, and that's because assembly language is very uh, sensitive to both the architecture that you're running as well as the operating system that you're running. So we're going to be using just x64 and Linux um, because uh, that ends up being like a very great uh, standard to go by. Uh, there's a couple other uh, pages that I'm going to use as reference here in this video. One of them is this uh, uh, soliduscode.com and it has a Linux system calls for x64 and this is a great little reference for uh, knowing exactly what registers to fill for the system calls and there's also this reference by Felix uh, Claudier who has this x86 and AMD64 instruction reference. And so if you ever want to know about um, any of the instructions that are in x64, you can read about them here. So for example, this add instruction, you can see all the different kinds of uh, adds that you can do and uh, you know whether they take a register or an immediate value and or a memory value and all kinds of different things on it. So that's just a great reference. Um, and we probably won't need this today, but we'll definitely be using this system call reference. And we'll definitely be using flat assembler. And so if you're on Linux, you'll want to download this flat assembler. Uh, it will come in a TGZ file. And so after you download it, um, uh, my preference is to, uh, uh, instead of using user local bin, uh, I have a a directory called applications. And so in fact, let me show exactly what I would do. So I have an applications directory. I'm going to remove my Phasm uh, installation and I'm going to download this Phasm assembler. So as you can see, I've downloaded Phasm 1.73.30. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that into, um, I'm gonna move from downloads, Phasm, to my current applications directory. I'm gonna use tarxf uh, with Phasm. And that's going to um, unzip, essentially, this uh, Phasm directory. And it's going to have Phasm now. So you can see Phasm has all of this stuff in here and there's some great uh, references in here, the examples. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to add this, uh, whatever this directory is. So I'm going to look at my present working directory. So in my case, it's home fill applications phasm. I want to add this, uh, this path to my path variable. And you can do this by going into your, um, your uh, bash RC file and down at the bottom you can export these different things and so I just added this line export path equals um, dollar sign path colon and then I have I have this apps uh, line 
declared, right? Which is just my home directory and applications. So I'm going to give it my applications and then the phasm directory. So that way, when I type in phasm, I can I know that it's going to um, use that um, flat assembler. And uh, there's a couple other things I, I always set around here too. I always have like these aliases for eb for edit bash, so I can just anywhere on my system I can type eb and edit my bash, and then I can reload my bash with rb. Uh, so uh, that's what we're going to do. Reload bash. I can say so. Then I can go to dev uh, talks uh, asm01. And then I can say which phasm, and it will tell me where my phasm application is. So if that is there, then you know that it's good. And you can type in phasm, I think dash V, and it will give you the version. And so then you know that you have a good phasm assembler installed. So that's kind of how you install your phasm assembler. Um, you can also put it in user local bin, and there's probably, I believe, um, apt search uh, phasm uh, will also show the uh, fast assembler. So you can just do like a sudo apt install phasm and that will install phasm on your machine as well if you want if you want that. Um, sometimes these package managers are a little bit behind. I like to have the latest version. So as you can see, I have 1.73.30 and this is 1.73.27. Uh, it really won't matter for these tutorials because we're, we're not using anything fancy. Uh, so if you want to uh, just have a simpler time, you can just do sudo apt, or uh, sorry, sudo apt install phasm, and that will install phasm on your system. So with that out of the way, uh, let's start creating our, our program. And so like I said, our program today will just be a simple program that reads from standard input and takes that and echoes it to standard output. And we're just going to create a directory. I already created my directory, asm01. And then I will create a main file, main.asm. And now we have a new file. And you can use whatever, uh, whatever text editor that you want. Uh, I happen to be using Vim here today. Uh, but you can use whichever text editor you're, uh, you're most familiar with. You can even use uh, like text edit or the like notepad equi equivalent. Um, Oh, that's right, I have it open somewhere else. But you can use any text editor that you want because all that matters is the text. So what we're going to do also today is we're going to take a look at one of those uh, examples that Phasm has. So if we go into our apps directory and then uh, we see the into Phasm, uh, we can go into the examples and then we can see elf exe, which is exactly what we want to look at. And we'll look at hello. Uh, 64. So there's a lot of great example programs that comes with the Phasm distribution. And so what we're going to do is you can see also the um, the registers that are used for, for system calls, uh, what order they're used in. Uh, but what we're interested in is essentially uh, this first part here. Um, and so we'll just go ahead and copy that and paste it because that will be good for our program. And so what each of these things does, uh, this format elf64 executable3, that essentially tells the phasm compiler that we're going to have a an, an, uh, 64-bit elf file. And, uh, and we're going to have an executable, and we're creating an executable. We're not going to be creating a library. And I believe 3 is essentially the limit on the number of passes that the compiler is allowed to make when compiling or when assembling the code. You don't have to worry about that too much. And then you, we can actually create different segments in our program. So one of them is a segment that is readable and executable. And this means that we're just going to have our code. And the entry, of course, is our entry point. And this dollar sign is essentially the, the current address that we have. So that's going to be the entry point of our system. Uh, what we're going to do is we're also going to have a segment uh, uh, that's readable and uh, say writable, and that will be uh, that will actually be our buffer. So we're going to have a buffer here, and we're going to say we're going to um, we're going to reserve some bytes, and we'll just reserve 80 bytes. I think that will be good enough for for our buffer. 
And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have, we're going to do a read and a write. And so for this, we have to interact with the operating system because the operating system is what allows us to interact with the file system and with the, with the, uh, the, the standard inputs and outputs and so forth. There's a bunch of things that are all uh, done by the operating system, so we're going to interact with that. And so uh, we're going to go to this system call list and we're going to do a system read. Uh, and you can see exactly what we need to fill out for this system read system call. And so REX is going to be zero, and then we're going to have to fill out RDI, RSI, and RDX. And so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to we're going to set um, we're going to set RAX to zero. So um, uh, Zoring a uh, or XORing a register with itself will just create zero. It's a very efficient way of doing zero. And so this will be uh, sys read and then the next thing we need to fill out is rdi which is the file descriptor so we're going to do um sor rdi with rdi this will be uh standard in now in linux there are th every process gets uh three file descriptors open for it automatically one is standard in um another is standard out and then standard error and those start at zero and go to zero one and two so zero is standard in one is standard out and two is standard error so by zeroing out the rdi register we say that we're going to write to standard input then we're going to give the address of our buffer and so we're going to move um uh, RDI or R, 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 RSI, I believe, RSI with uh, the address of our buffer. And then we're going to give the, the size of our buffer. So the maximum amount that we want to be able to read. So we're going to uh, move um, RDX with 80, which is the size of our buffer. Then we can perform a syscall and this will call, uh, this will make that system call. And so what will happen when we do the system call is our process will be loaded out and the operating system will be loaded into the processor and it will look at these registers. And it knows, uh, it'll look at this RAS re register and it'll say, ah, this is a, a system read. So I know what the other registers should be when I look at them. And then it will go do its work and then it will return itself back to us. So after this is done, so this is all just a read from stood in. And then we were going to write to stood out. And so in order to do that, we also need to interact with the operating system and we'll be using the, the syswrite uh, call. Oh, and the other thing that we should probably think about at the very end of our program is we're going to have to exit our program. And in order to do that, we're going to essentially do the same thing as we do down here. Uh, we're going to have a uh, success um, exit code. Uh, so we're going to we're going to say RDI. We're going to zor it. So exit code zero, and then we'll um, we're going to move. Um, 60 into rax sys exit and sys call and so this will be exiting there we go so now we have that uh, as the kind of the prologue or the epilogue of our program so now we can talk about writing to standard output and that is this first um, or uh, system write system call. So we're going to set RAX to 1. So we're going to move uh, 1 into RAX. Then we're going to uh, have the file descriptor in RDI, which it should still be OK. Here we go. So we're going to move RDI uh, 1 stood out. And then we're going to give it the address of our buffer, which uh, should um, RSI should still be address of buffer. And then we're going to give it the, the size of our buffer. Now, technically, 
what we should do is we should be giving it the, the size. Uh, this sysread will actually return the number of bytes or the number of elements that it read from the system call, and we can use that here. But we're just gonna still give it the, um, essentially the size of our buffer. So we're gonna do RDX, which should still be 80, but we'll just put it here anyway, buffer size. Then we can do a syscall, and that should write back to standard out. So essentially we've written an echo function. So let's go ahead and if we've done everything correctly, it should assemble. So we can do phasm, main.asm, and it will tell us that it took three passes and it created an executable that's 233 bytes. Oh, and that in order to assemble this program, it used 16 kilobytes of memory. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, we can look at our files that were created and we can see that there now exists an executable that's 233 bytes and it's called main. So if we call this main function, we can see that it now is uh, has made the system call and it's uh, waiting for us to type in something. So let's say hello. And if we hit enter, it will echo hello back out and exit the program. So we can see that we now have an, uh, a successful program and that's about good for now. I wanna to try to keep these things short. Uh, next time, we'll probably look into creating our own user-defined functions. So uh, thank you for watching, and until next time.